In this lecture in Climate and Earth 401, we're going to talk about the Coriolis force. I'm going to use the derivation that is in Holton and Hakeem, our textbook. This derivation requires understanding of the lectures on rotating coordinate systems and angular momentum. We're going to start from this figure where we have a spherical Earth and it is rotating around the polar axis with an angular velocity of omega. We're going to consider a particular latitude phi. The Earth's radius is A, and the radius around the axis of rotation is going to be A cosine of the latitude. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our idealized parcel of air and we are going to displace or move that air to the south or to the north. When we move it to the south or to the north we're moving it in the y direction and hence we are going to have a displacement of delta y. We will assume that delta y will be small. Because we move delta y we're going to get some change of the radius around the axis of rotation. We're going to get some change of delta r. We're going to say move at delta y from here to here and then that's going to lead to some change in the delta r. In fact delta r will get bigger by some amount moving it from here to here and that's what I've tried to indicate here with this figure of the change of delta r. So this is perhaps a little bit counterintuitive, but we're changing delta y in the north-south direction, but because we are in this tangential coordinate system, there is a change in delta r, this big R, which is essentially the radius around the axis of rotation. What we want to do now is to consider the angular momentum at these two places. So the angular momentum per unit mass is going to be r squared times big omega plus u over r. If we're moving to this new place then L here is going to be r plus delta r squared times in parentheses the large omega and there's going to be u plus delta u and r plus delta r close parentheses here. So this is the relative angular momentum per unit mass at the new location. If it's conserved, then what we're going to say is that the angular momentum in these two locations is equal. We're going to expand the right-hand side and ignore the squares and the higher order terms. Again, we're going to expand the right-hand side, ignore the squares and the higher order terms. If this does not make sense to you, then you need to go back and review the expected mathematical knowledge in the course and we're going to end up with a delta u, a change in velocity, is going to be approximately, and the approximation comes from we're ignoring squares and higher order terms, it's going to be approximately minus 2 omega delta r minus u over r delta r. So we have related u to the change in the radius of rotation around the axis We've related u to that change in such a way that this equation remains true. For our southward displacement, we can then calculate that delta r is equal to minus the sine of the latitude times delta y. So we go back to our original displacement of delta y. And then making that substitution, we can relate delta u, the change in the relative velocity, to the displacement delta y, and it's going to be 2 omega sine of the latitude delta y plus u over r sine of the latitude delta y. Hence, delta u, the change in velocity, is going to be approximately 2 omega sine latitude delta y plus u over a cosine latitude sine latitude delta y where here we have just simply used the definition of a cosine latitude is equal to r. 
if we divide by delta t and then take the limit as delta t and delta y go to zero, then we see that du dt, the acceleration that has occurred due to this displacement, is going to be 2 omega sine latitude plus u over a cosine latitude sine latitude times a dy dt here. And we are going to recognize from our previous consideration in the rotating coordinate system that this 2 omega v sine of latitude is the Coriolis term. And I invite you to check with the derivation that we did in the rotating coordinate system lecture to see what is the same and what is different from the form of these two equations. We've also used the definition here that the sine over cosine is equal to the tangent and that dy dt is equal to v. So we see this relationship that the acceleration in the x direction or the longitudinal direction is going to be related to the velocity in the y direction or the latitudinal direction. What is this term? What's this additional term that's sitting out here, uv over a tangent? And this is one of the terms that is called the curvature of the metric term, and it takes into account that y, that displacement, actually curves. It is defined on the surface of the Earth. You should remember that what we have done here is only for a displacement in the north-south direction. And if we were to repeat this with a displacement in the east-west direction, then we can follow the derivation in the Holton and Hakim textbook and using conservation and relying on some sort of series approximations. This is a explicitly linear derivation. If we do this similar analysis in three dimensions, we can get this representation of what we might call a combination of the Coriolis term and the curvature or the metric terms in three dimensions. The acceleration in the u direction or the acceleration in the x direction is proportional to the velocity in the y direction. We also see here a term that's related to w, the vertical velocity. Here in the meridional direction, we see that the acceleration in the v or the y or the meridional direction is related to the velocity in the zonal or the x direction. And we see a vertical term where the acceleration in the vertical is proportional also to the velocity in another direction and here in the u direction. If we consider only the horizontal equations, assume that w is small, then the w that was in this preceding slide here and here we have made the decision that we can ignore them, so this is an approximation that you may have to come back and revisit at some time in the future. With the assumption that w is small, then the equations on the preceding slide reduce to this form where we have a term that looks like the Coriolis term and a term that looks like what we call the curvature of the metric terms. For synoptic scale systems in mid-latitudes, the first terms, these two terms here, are much larger than the second terms. So again, we have made an implicit approximation here that through our experience of a certain type, a certain scale of motion, that these terms here, the curvature terms, can be ignored. Again, approximation that you may have to revisit for problems in the future or for developing a comprehensive model. This is a very powerful framework in which we can do analysis of motion. We get the Coriolis acceleration in the x or the u direction is equal to fv. The Coriolis acceleration in the v or the y or the meridional direction is minus fu, where f is defined to be 2 omega sine latitude. 
having gone through a consideration of the gravitational force and the pressure gradient force and the viscous forces in previous lectures, we can write a reasonably complete representation of our momentum equation, remembering that this is momentum per unit mass, hence it's an equation for the for the velocity that du dt is going to be equal to minus 1 over rho del p. So here is that consideration of per unit mass plus nu del squared u. This is the viscosity minus g unit vector k. So this is the gravity only acting in the vertical direction. And again, we are in a coordinate system where this is your local vertical from where you're standing plus these two Coriolis terms, the FV in the I direction and the FU in the J direction. And with that we've introduced the Coriolis term and we have developed a reasonably complete representation of the momentum equation.